So as I say, hello, welcome, welcome to this lunchtime seminar. Um, thank you so much for attending, uh, especially in light of alternative entertainment uh, that is going on at the moment that you might be uh, <laughs> splitting your attention with uh, at this point. Um, so we're running this seminar in order to celebrate and highlight men's mental health. Uh, Men's Mental Health and International Men's Day, but it's not just focused on men's mental health, and men's mental well-being. This is something that we really hope that everyone is going to be able to benefit from. It's not just for men, not just for those who have experience um, around mental health. It's something very, very close to my heart, and I'm sure uh, close to yours as well, given that you're deciding to share this time with us. So thank you so much. Even in the time um, since I kind of started university, the, the national landscape and, and the way that how we view mental health and the way that we speak about mental health has shifted so much for the better. Um, but I think talking about mental health is something that a lot of us do still struggle with. And there's still a bit of a way to go, which brings me on to, to Andy, our, our guest speaker. Now, before I ask him to introduce himself, if anyone has any questions at this point um, or throughout, just drop them in the chat box and we'll come back to those and deal with those at the end um, and, and we'll get a chance for, for Andy to address those. Um, anyway, you aren't here to listen to me monologuing. So Andy, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'd like to hand over to you if, if, if you're there, if you'd like to unmute yourself um, and, and yeah, over to you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Um, and thank you to the rest of you for, uh, again, choosing the me over the football. Um, it's so great, uh, great to be invited to speak to you today. Some of you may be aware of Andy's Man Club. Some of you may have heard of us before, and maybe seen bits of us on social media, and maybe have a little bit of an awareness of the work that it is that we do. But I'm also certain there's likely to be people here who don't know who we are, don't know what we do, and don't know why we do it. Now, the why, as far as Andy's Man Club is concerned, has and will always be central to absolutely everything we'll ever do. So to help highlight why we exist, I'd like to start today by showing you a quick video, please. When I first approached Elaine, it was about finding that one man. Just getting one man to stop one of our family going through what we'd been through. Hi, my name's Luke Ambler. I'm the co-founder of Andy's Man Club, a talking group for men. He were a cheeky chappy, typical lads lad, tough as nails, but I think probably had a soft centre. Andrew died early hours of the Tuesday, 5th of April, and the weekend prior to that, he'd had an enormous falling out with his partner. And I just think he got himself into a really dark place that he couldn't get out of. And that's the sad thing. We just think he'd have talked to anybody to have snapped him out of it, told him what he were thinking were rubbish, he would still have been here today. Four days after my brother-in-law, Andrew, died, I approached my partner and asked her about setting up a group where we could get guys just like Andy, myself, talking. Three months after, I approached my mother-in-law, Elaine, at a wedding, family wedding, and asked if we could set up this, this idea where men could just meet up and chat. And, Together we came up with this concept, Andy's Man Club, a simple idea where men, like myself, like any bloke, normal bloke, could just meet and talk. You'll have that anxiety, that nervousness, that fear of judgement, but there's none of that when you come through the door Andy's Man Club. It's a tea, a coffee, you sit down, a ball gets passed around, you have a chat, and you'll be amazed at what it can do for you, just letting some of that out. So as I say, that's our why. As you could see there, Andy was a 23-year-old lad. Like so many other lads of his age, he he led a normal life, you'd assume that he, looking from the outside in, he was a happy-go-lucky young man, enjoyed his football with his mates, enjoyed his weekends, and then unfortunately, without any sign, signal or warning, one day Andy took his own life. Unfortunately, Andy's not his own. In this country alone, there's over 4,500 men take their own lives every single year. And when you start to boil those numbers down, that's 12 men every day. That's one man every two hours. And when you read that suicide is the biggest killer of men under 50, shows the size of the problem that we're dealing with. What intensifies that number for me, and I fall into that category, I'm a man under 50, so I'm more likely to do myself damage than anything that we hear so much about. There's still a stigma attached to people talking about the subject of suicide. You know, every time you open up the newspaper or turn on the news, there's a story about risk factors for men. And as fantastic as they are and as helpful as they are, not very often do they talk about this. Andy's Man Club hope to break down that stigma in the hope that more and more people can start to talk about the subject, in the hope that more and more people can start to talk about the things that lead to them taking that step. 
So Luke that you saw in the video there is Andy's brother-in-law. Being Andy's brother-in-law, Luke took a lot of the responsibility of the things that needed to happen after Andy had died upon himself. So for example, he was the one that went and collected Andy's car from where he left it. He was the one that was breaking the news of Andy's death to members of the family and basically watching them crumble in front of him. He was of the opinion that if Andy had had somewhere to go, where he could talk, somewhere that was free from judgment of both the person that he was and of the things that he was saying, somewhere where that stigma, that's a perception that men are a weakness for talking about their issues, if somewhere like that existed, then they thought that Andy might still be here with us. So that's what he set about to try and achieve. Decided that it was going to start a coffee club for men. Now that sounds like a massively simple solution to what we know to be a huge complex issue. But as we know, simple solutions are very often the most effective. But also, as we know, because we're British, we always try and solve every problem by putting the kettle on. Now this happened in Halifax in West Yorkshire. And for anybody that's familiar with this sort of area will know that Halifax as a place is very you know, widely populated with the sort of fellas that are far too comfortable to either stick the chin up and chest out and internalise every problem and feeling they've ever had, or to push it as far away from them as they possibly can do. From one post that went out on Facebook to say that Andy's Man Club was happening, nine men turned up. Now, for nine men to turn up to something like Andy's Man Club in a place like Halifax, talking about the things that he's talking about, showed that there was a clear need for the groups to happen. A few weeks after the start of the sessions, Luke had seen things like the ice bucket challenge and the press up challenge happen on social media and thought that as bad as the reputation is that social media has for the effects it can have on people, especially as far as mental health is concerned, it can also be quite a positive and powerful tool. So he decided that he was going to start his own campaign. The idea behind the campaign was that it would use that very picture that you can see on your screen now, telling men that it's okay to talk. Don't worry about being perceived as a weakness or a burden. Actually, the idea that talking takes that much strength, it's a very, very strong thing to do. Also, the idea that we'd much rather listen to you talk about your problems and your issues for as long as it takes than to have to sit and listen to your eulogy for 20 minutes. Now, the campaign was going to work in the very same way as those previous ones that we talked about in that people would take their own selfie, attach a screenshot of the statistics, and then share and nominate five friends, and they'd share and nominate five friends, and so on and so on. A couple of interesting things about that campaign. The first one being that as Luke took that picture there, he was sat next to his Mrs. Lisa, and he turned around to Lisa and says, what do you think? think it'd be a good idea? think it'll work? And she said, it's much more likely to work if you use somebody else on the self because you're a right ugly sock. Now, I disagree with Lisa. I'm not saying that because I find Luke dashingly handsome. I'm saying it because I know how many Instagram filters he put on that picture. If any of you ever meet Luke, he'll talk to you what all 15 of those filters did, how they made his skin look so youthful and how to hold a camera so you don't get your double chin shot on everything. The other interesting thing about that campaign is you've probably already read there. It's now been recognised the biggest mental health campaign on the planet. Over 100 million people took part in that and it's still ongoing to this day. What's interesting about that, however, is that 24 hours after Luke shared in that picture, because of those stigmas and those attitudes we've already talked about, it hadn't got much traction at all. Now, that's baffling when you think that this is on social media. You know, think to the last time you scrolled through a social media platform and some of the controversial and out there things that people are far too comfortable to talk about on there, but they were too uncomfortable to talk about male suicide. That tells you absolutely everything about why that campaign needed to happen and why those things needed to be challenged. Andy's Man Club is the sort of organisation that would rather focus on a solution than a problem. So Luke thought to himself, how can I get around this? His first thought was to text his dad. You know, his dad being a positive male role model, different generation. Thought it would make me feel as though a difference is being made. At the time as well, Luke was also a professional rugby league player. That meant that he decided that a couple of his teammates to get involved and that meant that the supporters started to get involved and it started to snowball from there. And it snowballed so much so that by the end of the first week, we'd had a massive result and Ricky Gervais had got involved. Now, I'm not pretending for one minute at all that Ricky Gervais has a knowledge and an understanding of the work that we do here at Andy's Man Club, but hopefully behind him getting involved in that campaign means that maybe somebody out there does. Brilliant as well to then see him go on and normalise the conversation around suicide with the series Afterlife. I'm not claiming that Andy's Man Club's had anything to do with Afterlife either, by the way. I'd love to be able to, but it's just a happy coincidence that, you know, for that sort of subject matter to be brought into the living rooms of people on a daily basis can only be a positive because it does it in a challenging way as well. One minute it's laugh out loud funny. The next minute you open mouth with shock because you dropped a sea bomb onto a child in a playground. To the next minute you're crying with the emotion of it all. As I say, for that sort of subject matter to be brought into the living rooms of people on a daily basis can only be positive in my eyes. We then started to get some attention from the world of sport. You know, there's the likes there you can see of uh, world championship boxers and Anthony Joshua and Josh Warrington and rugby league player Callum Watkins. What jumps out to me when I see these guys, especially is the arenas in which they operate, It'd be really easy to pigeonhole these guys as the epitome of masculinity. You know, really manly men doing manly things in manly areas. Hopefully from these guys getting involved with this campaign can show men out there that 
if they're in a similar situation, they feel that they can't speak out because they're in a, a very macho environment. If those guys can do it, then anybody can do it. We then had some support from other areas of sport. You know, we've got the likes then of Leeds United wearing Andy's Man Club warm-up T-shirts. We've got the front cover of match day programmes, advertising boards around the side of pictures, all the way to local level clubs wearing our logos on the front of their shirts. Now, this goes a huge, huge way to help us challenge those stigmas within one specific demographic of men. Those men who maybe feel as though sport is their only outlet, whether or not that's participating or spectating. If those guys are on their way to that ground that weekend and happen to see the front cover of that match day programme telling them that their club supports an organisation like us and telling them it's OK to talk, that could be something that prompts them to look at getting some help with that. What we're not saying with this slide, however, is that you have to be one of those sporty, outgoing types of guys to come along to an Andy's Man Club. Quite the opposite. We have every single walk of life walk through the doors of our clubs, from every single race, religion, colour, creed, sexual orientation, social economic background, talking about every single type of problem you could ever imagine a fella having. The example I always point to on this is of two guys that attend our club over in Halifax. One of those guys very much falls into the demographic of men that you see on your screen right now. He's an enormous football fan. He's in a different English city every weekend, supporting his team and investing so much of his time and emotion into that. His best friend is a guy that he met through Andy's Man Club. And this guy has the hobby of jewellery making. You know, if these two guys had met at school, it's likely that they'd have been tearing strips off each other, maybe wouldn't have got on because of his, you know, their different interests in life. Those guys support each other so much so that their family spent last Christmas together. You know, that really does go to show the sort of relationships that can develop through something like Andy's Man Club and the sort of support that's on offer. Ultimately, though, these are the people that we hope that benefit from Andy's Man Club. Now, we'd like these guys to benefit in a number of ways. The first one being Andy's Man Club's quite unique in what we've set about to try and achieve. There isn't many organisations out there that have set themselves up purely with the focus of wiping themselves out. You know, we don't want to have to exist. We want to make people feel comfortable talking to their friends, family, colleagues, brother, sister, whoever it might be about what's going on in their life. That they don't necessarily feel the need to come along to one of our clubs because they have outlets available to them elsewhere. Our hope is that by the time these guys are of an age, we're a little bit closer to that goal and maybe we can operate under a different guise. The other way that we hope that these guys benefit is from the adults in their lives, finding out about Andy's Man Club now, coming along, benefiting, hopefully making them happier people as a result, but ultimately meaning that these guys aren't touched by the pain left behind by suicide. Unfortunately, the young man that you can see in the middle there hasn't been that fortunate. That's Alfie, Luke's son, Andy's nephew. Luke says that one of the major reasons behind Andy's Man Club being invented is because when they had to break the news to Alfie that his uncle Andy had died, the screech settled out. Not only did it shatter Luke's heart into a million pieces, it put the windows through. The pain left behind by suicide is like nothing else. There's always those questions that remain that can never be answered. The main one, of course, being why. If we can reach out to more and more guys that are feeling the way that Andy felt, hopefully we'll have less lads in the situation that Alfie's in, less brother-in-laws in the situation that Luke's in, and less mums in the situation that Elaine's in. Now, speaking of Luke and Elaine, we're just going to hear from him again now on a video. Talk about the journey that Andy's Man Club has been on over the last few weeks. Starting a, a group or a club called um, Andy's Man Club. And the reason I came up with it because I've been passionate about mental health for a, a long time. Uh, three months ago, uh, my brother-in-law, um, uh, died by suicide and I wanted to do something where I could personally contribute and make a group and, and go and help other men come up with a plan where guys could come together and talk and if it ends up being like tonight's the first night so you know I'm quite nervous about tonight and I know it turns up but the out the outreach that I've received has been has been unbelievable and, and it's so rewarding now looking at what we've done and why we've set it up along with Andy's mum. We've got a, a purpose behind it which is mental health and Andy uh, and that his his name can live on and, and create a legacy uh, and helping and if we can move this to Bradford and Leeds and so on and so on and other people get involved and they want to set up an Andy's Man Club in Nottingham or up in Scotland that'd be ideal. <laughs> Andy's Man Club. Andy's Man Club. Andy's Man Club. We're here at Albert Prom. Significant for two reasons for me. One, 
we're just above where where Andy died by suicide, and two, we're just above the tower house where I approached you five years ago and said, "Can we start Andy Roberts Coffee Club?" Which no one will have heard of because you accepted the idea but declined the name. And then we both went away, didn't we? And you'd thought of Andy's an, an acronym, and I'd thought of this thing, Man Club, and together we created the the beast that is now well known as as Andy's Man Club. How did you feel? Uh, Ed in there that first night. Excited, actually. I remember going to Morrison's to buy tea, coffee and sugar. And like you said to me, the loan of bills turn up, there won't be anyone there. And I says, I can put up with you for an hour. Um, and I were actually amazed that nine guys walked through the door. And all opened up. And accepted me being there. Yeah. So what's your biggest few highlights been over the last five years? The overall journey, like, I won't change anything from putting that first post out to doing that Sky Sports interview to having no idea what how many guys would come to, nine guys turning up, to then 15 guys turning up. It just completely exploded to next minute being down doing stuff with Samaritans, Professor Green, Prince Charles, Prince Harry, Letters off Theresa May, the Queen's Awards, Uni Lad, Lad Bible, Shortlist, like, the list goes on. Just took over, didn't it? Yeah, there was nothing else. No, there wasn't. I breathed, slept, ate, drank, and his mind blew. Everyone that goes to their own group says it's a brotherhood that they've got. It's like having a second family. I know a lot of men that have struggled generally, um, especially in the UK. I think um, not enough men talk about the problems. The first step towards helping myself was joining Andy's Man Club. The only time I first spoke about my problems was when I first went to Andy's Man Club. I first sought help through Andy's Man Club. It's saved my life, really. One of the things that I still found, find that's been the most powerful thing is that very first night we all got together for Lad Bible showing. We hired Shay, did it all up with balloons and everything, and we had no idea at that stage whether it was going to be just me and you again, or what our families were going to go. And there were, what, three to 400 people turned up. And that is the first time I realised how much work we were doing to help the families. Yeah. There were so many families there that had lost people. Two different mums came up to me. Oh, it's got me again. Two different mums came up to me and said, it's the first time I've ever been able to talk about it because suicide is something you just never talk about and if somebody asks how did your son die but it is very difficult to say they died of suicide and they were both in tears and they just said it's the first time ever we've been able to talk and it weren't until then that I realised what a massive impact we were having on the families as well. So, five year old day, happy birthday and his man club so that first night, we've walked in, nine men have turned up, one of which, Oliver Vicks. What a journey that man's had. And they just... I had nowhere to go, nobody to talk to. Um, I found myself in the pub most nights, um, just for some company to go somewhere and be around other people. I soon realised that that wasn't a very productive way of dealing with my problems. It was, it was about that time that I found Andy's Man Club. Um, I actually attended the very first ever session of Andy's Man Club. From there, just that first night, opening up, talking to people about my problems, it really helps put things in perspective, knowing that A, it wasn't just me that was going through these things, but also it's okay to talk and it's okay to get things off your chest. Um, after that first session, I felt like I'd had 12 cans of Red Bull. I honestly felt like I could have flown home that night. Um, 
and I knew then that that was a feeling that I wanted to share with as many men as possible, provide this platform to as many men as possible. So we're here now today, um, opening our 50th club in Pontefract, um, and we set out of a, with a goal five years ago of having 10 clubs in five years. So to have 50 clubs in five years, it's absolutely unreal. The fact that you were the first guy, or one of the first guys to walk through the door, one of the first guys to speak, to then go on to be a facilitator of the biggest group at the time of Andy's man club in Halifax. Well, you were really at first facilitator. First, yeah, yeah, and then became one of our project development champions. And now, heading up, starting new groups. He's just put the pin on the board for the 50th group over there in Pontefract and to celebrate, he jumped out of a plane. So when people talk about that one man, it's not just a guy walked through the door and he's talked about his problems. Here's a guy who's walked through the door, talked about his problems, got himself back into his job, started seeing his son again, got his life right back on track and then now works for us and he's jumping out of a plane celebrating up in there. That's how Andy's Man Club grows because once people are in better positions, they don't walk away, they want to give something back and not the next man that's going to walk through that door. Yeah. But the biggest part for me that's made this journey so nice is the people. That's what's so special about Andy's Man Club. The people, you know, the fact we're a registered charity now and we have eight amazing trustees, seven eight amazing trustees, seven fantastic staff, two, over 250 plus heroes, facilitators who open those doors every single Monday night to give guys that safe place to go and talk, to the thousands, you know, the army of volunteers out there on the streets, raising awareness, backing us, supporting us, loving us, liking, sharing, commenting, every single thing that we do, because without the people at AMC, AMC is nothing, and they are the biggest asset that we've got, and we're indebted to each and every person that has ever supported us and continues to do so. If I could send any message out, it would be that other men or other people could set up a club, call it whatever you want, and just get men talking and get making it feel that it's okay. Get rid of this stigmatism that it's, it's a, a problem. Uh, and let's, let's squash it together and uh, hopefully, you know, there could be some lives saved from it. So as I say, that's just a snapshot of the journey that Andy's Man Club have been on over the last few years um, that we released last year um, for our fifth anniversary. Just before we move on from that, I want to touch really briefly on Ollie's story because that's a story that's been replicated to every single one of the clubs that we run throughout the country because not only are those clubs run by volunteers, but those volunteers are guys that have taken that step through the doors as a group user at some point or another. For a couple of reasons, that never fails to blow me away. The first one being that it shows any man out there that's going through a particular storm at this moment in time that no matter what you're going through, it can and it will get better. Talking can be a massive catalyst behind that, though. It also shows any man out there that's thinking of coming along to something like Andy's Man Club for the first time, that the guy that's welcoming me through the door has an understanding of the darker place that my mind can become. And he also has an understanding of to the courage and guts it takes to walk through the doors of something like Andy's Man Club. And in my experience, that's been the difference between so many guys making it through the doors and not. So what is Andy's Man Club, then? We currently have 112 community clubs across England, Scotland and Wales. Those clubs are open to any man aged 18 or over. So while we were born out of the tragedy that happened with Andy, what's unique about us is that men don't have to have had suicidal thoughts but they don't have to have a mental health condition. They could just be struggling with a particular thing in life at that moment in time and need an outlet for it. They're more than welcome to come along as well as anybody else in any other sort of situation as well. The sessions happen every Monday night, 7pm, except for bank holidays. And the other unique thing about us is that there's no referral, no registration, no signing in, no cost. And a key, key part of it for me is the fact that there's no obligation to speak. So guys can walk through that door, grab a brew. You never know. One of the guys might have been baking. There might be a lovely Victoria sponge sat on the side for you. At the very least, there's going to be some biscuits. Sit in the circle. Talk if you want to. Don't if you don't. There's always an example I point to on this. And it's of two guys, uh, sorry, of a guy that attends one of our clubs up in Scotland. The first night he ever walked through the doors of that club, he had a pair of headphones on and he wasn't in a position where he was comfortable to take those off at all. So rather than challenge him, the facilitator turned around to him and said, well, you know, he's walked through the door. That's a big enough step. We'll leave him to it. He's not doing anybody any harm. The week after that, that guy walked through the doors. Exactly the same situation. Now, having met him the week before, on that occasion, the facilitator happened to turn around to him and just say, well, do me a favour, buddy. Take your headphones off for the first five minutes of the session because then if you do decide that you want to speak, We've introduced the session and you have an understanding about how to go about doing so. He took his headphones off, left them off for maybe 25, 30 minutes, and then his anxiety went through the roof again and he put them back on. 
The week after that, that guy set himself a challenge. And he challenged himself to walk through the doors of an Andy's Man Club and not bring his headphones with him at all. Now, he still didn't speak, but he sat there and he listened to what every single guy in that room was going through and how they were dealing with it and all these different types of things. So that the week after when he came along, he spoke. And he spoke about how he'd been talked down off a bridge a few weeks previously and then he'd spent some residential time, you know, making sure that he was safe. All these other dreadful situations that were happening in his life. From that moment on, the trajectory that guy's been on ever since has been a massively upward one. The first thing that never, ever, ever fails to blow me away is just like Ollie that we've just heard from, he's now the group facilitator. That's absolutely staggering when you think that he didn't want to engage with it when he first came through the doors. He's also got a new job. He's in a new relationship. He's now stepfather to an amazing little girl. All these other fantastic things that are happening in his life as well. And he says that the only reason he's still here to enjoy them is the fact that he came along to an Andy's Man Club. From talking to him about this, I happened to say to him once, well, what kept you coming through the doors? Because you can't have been getting too much out of it the first couple of times you came through the doors and, you know, you weren't engaging with anybody. What kept you coming through the doors? He says the fact that I could. The fact that nobody was putting any pressure on me meant that I felt comfortable to come back knowing that I wasn't going to be pressured into anything. And he says that that's the reason why he's still walking the face of this earth today. And that's absolutely enormous. We're now in a situation where we have over 2,300 men using our clubs on a weekly basis. Now, we're not putting that out there to say, look at us, how fantastic are we, and blow smoke up our own holes. Quite the opposite. We're putting that out there to show any man out there that no matter what you're going through, you're not going through it alone. You know, I think because not many other guys talk about their situation, people can think to themselves, I'm the only one that's thinking and feeling this sort of thing. If you are in that situation, take a look at that figure and know that you're not on your own in this sort of situation and that there are so many other guys that are going through this. Rewind six years and see that we have nine guys coming through our doors and that's a massive, massive jump. Now, what's another massive jump is up to those 4,500 guys that are still taking that step every single year. That's why we always take opportunities like this to come out, speak to as many people as we possibly can do in the hope that one more man walks through the doors of one of the clubs that we run this evening. We also have an online platform available. While that was born out of the pandemic, you know, we were no different to anybody else in that we weren't able to meet face to face. So we had to develop a way of supporting our fellas. We developed that online platform, and even though all of our face-to-face -face sessions are now back open, what's massive for me is the fact that we still have around about 100 men jumping on those online sessions every single week. Confidentiality is a massive part of Andy's Man Club, so much so that what's said in those rooms stays in those rooms. The same goes for the identity of people within those rooms. Some people are not comfortable to tell everybody they're going, and that's fine by us. As a result of that, we will never, ever publish those links online at all. So all the people who want to jump onto our online sessions need to do is drop us an email to info at andysmanclub.co.uk and we'll send that link out to them directly. I'm just going to share with you now another quick video of some of the other guys that have walked through the doors of Andy's Man Club and the positive effects it's had on them. Worries and anxieties. It's a big part of my life. Uh, started about 10 years ago. I didn't want to live anymore. Um, I thought the world would be better off without me. I thought that maybe if I was to take my own life, I could be with my child. Uh, but I was very suicidal at the time. As a child, it was getting bullied and not being able to say how I felt to people. To talk about the problems I went through as a child and everything that happened, I didn't want to. My worries and anxieties started um, around the passing of my father in uh, 2013. It affected me in my day-to-day -day life, it affected my job, it affected relationships. I didn't talk to my friends or family about my problems that were going on. So the easiest thing for me was to not be here. Uh, it was a Sunday night, I think it was, and I knew I didn't want to be here. And I was planning that night to do something. Thought worries and anxieties. Uh, Thoughts coming from my mind were um, how I'd be judged by people, you know, real bad thoughts about, you know, getting out of this life. My worries and anxieties probably started a long time ago, but the most recent was last year when my cousin committed suicide. It was very hard to discuss my problems at that moment in time as I couldn't even string a sentence together. I felt very alone. I had a lot of people around me. I know a lot of people cared, but just something instinctively in me just wouldn't open up. I never spoke about it with anyone. The problems have kept me all my life. There's a, a stigma attached to around how a man should appear and what he should say. There's an ideal view of a man and I think people need to 
break the, the cycle of that and just not conform to that. I know a lot of men that have struggled generally, um, especially in the UK, I think um, not enough men talk about the problems. The first step towards helping myself was joining down this man club. The only time I first spoke about my problems was when I first went to Andy's Man Club. I first sought help through Andy's Man Club. It's saved my life, really. My name's Luke Campbell and I'm the founder of Andy's Man Club. I believe male mental health in our country has, for a long time now, been stigmatised. I've put out three stigmas, weakness, burden, and embarrassment, and I feel that's a lot of reason why people don't want to speak. They feel weak to speak. They feel like they're burden of us, and with the lad culture we have with banter, they feel like they're embarrassed to give any vulnerability away. To any man out there watching this, it's not weak to talk. It's not weak to ask for help. Uh, steps that I've taken to resolve my issues. I've uh, started talking a lot more to people. The importance of talking about how you feel is, is phenomenal. Talking has really opened me up to people, my family, my friends. It's turned my life around. I'm happier than I have been in my entire life. No matter what, I talk about everything now. I won't keep anything in at all. If I were going to give any advice, it's talk to whether it be your loved ones, professionals, uh, your friends, and if you don't have any friends, reach out. You know, if if you are willing to reach out, people are willing to help. Getting guys in a room and opening up and giving people hope, giving people a lifeline, that's what Andy's Man Club's all about. My advice to any man out there is that you will get through this. At times you may think that there is no other way out, that that relationship breakdown, that debt you're in, or whatever issues you're struggling with, that you can't get through that, but trust me, you can. I've dealt with enough people to know now that that cloud will pass. That roller coaster you're on where it just seems like you're going down, down, down will take a turn and you'll get back up. you just got to look up and know that the brighter times are coming and I guarantee, reach out, it's okay to talk. So just to note off the back of that video, there's four guys in that video that talk about making pretty serious plans to end their own days. All four of those guys, from walking through the doors of an Andy's Man Club, talking about their situation, being listened to. You know, we can turn around and say, it's okay to talk as much as we want. If there's nobody there to listen, there's no point. But everybody in an Andy's Man Club is listened to. They've all turned their life around to such a degree that all four of them have been group facilitators for somewhere around the country. And one of them even sits on our board of trustees. Now that really does show the power of talking and what it can do for a person. Also talked previously about Luke being a former rugby league player. This is what it looks like without any Instagram filters, by the way. Now that's somewhere where toxic masculinity is still quite prevalent. That whole man up culture and don't show any sort of weakness. For him to be coming from that sort of background and saying things like it's okay to talk can hopefully go a huge, huge way to helping challenge those stigmas and get more and more men to be able to open up to the point. We are aware that that video uses what we now know to be dated language around suicide. That committed word is not something that should be associated with it anymore. But we apologise for that being there. This is knowledge we've given ourselves since the video was made. And as I'm sure you'll agree, the message that the video puts across is a very, very powerful one. Now, just before we finish today, um, we've been really fortunate here at Andy's Man Club that we've had a little bit of recognition for the work that we do in that we've won both a National Diversity Award and a Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. Again, we're not putting this out there to say, look at how fantastic we are and what we've won. The only reason that we ever accept any sort of awards is the knowledge that it will put us under the noses of more and more men. I know, for example, of one man that now attends our club over in Liverpool that only came along because that, ITV, that um, National Diversity Award was broadcast live on ITV. The Queen's Award for me is an ever so slightly different one because it goes on to recognise who I see as the true heroes of Andy's Man Club, who are our volunteers. Because not only do those guys open those doors of those clubs every single Monday night, they dedicate so much of their time to attending events and awareness events for us, all the while supporting the guys that walk through the doors and supporting themselves. That to me makes those guys nothing short of heroes and we're absolutely indebted to them. But the only award that we will ever need is the knowledge that we now have somewhere for men to be able to go to talk and open up about the things that are happening in their lives and that that has saved lives. Now, this slide's ever so slightly an anomaly through our presentation. As I'm sure you can understand the reasons behind it, we have a very male-centred focus within our presentation. But on this one, you can see some of the female support that we can get. There's an old saying, and it's very true as far as Andy's Man Club's concerned, that behind every strong man, there's a great woman. We couldn't do what we do without the support of women. Two of the ones that you can see on there, obviously, we've got Elaine and his mum, who's still very heavily involved with the organisation. We've got Sabrina that works in the office. We have another, another couple of ladies that work here. And the amount of support that we get from women in loads and loads of different ways is absolutely brilliant. Um, and we couldn't do what we do without that sort of support. 
So thanks so much for your attention this afternoon. Um, I'm going to come off screen share in a moment or two and take any questions or comments that anybody might have. But before I do that, I'd like to ask something of everybody here. I know a bit to talk about what we've talked about. In my experience, there's somebody in everybody's life that will benefit from knowing that Andy's Man Club exists. Whether or not that happens through a face-to-face -face conversation or a text message, it might even be just through liking, sharing or commenting on one of our social media platforms. If that lands on the right person's timeline, the impact of that could be enormous. Secondarily to that, if I could sound a little bit beggy, could I please ask you to just share the fact that we've spoken to you today on your LinkedIn profiles? Talk about what it is that we've talked about because the impact of that could be doubled. Because not only might that one man see that, um, that presentation as a result of that, it might also land on the right person's timeline at the right time. So thanks again so much for your attention. I'll come off screen share. I'll turn my camera back on as well so you can see my happy smiley faces. Um, I turned that off as well. Sorry, I didn't explain it at the start. I turned it off just to make sure that the videos play properly, which, of course, they didn't. Um, so apologies for that. But, uh, but yeah, uh, any questions or comments, obviously, are more than welcome. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. I was, um, oh, do you mind just muting yourself while I'm talking as well? That's right. Thank you. Um, sorry, it's just a bit of feedback. Um, really powerful. Really, really appreciate it. I, I, I've got a couple of questions myself. If anyone else wants to uh, has any questions, just feel free to put them in the chat box as well. Um, but thank you so much. I think one of the one of the things I think that was um, that kind of struck with me is you talk about kind of the position of vulnerability that a lot of people are in when they first come to to Andy's Man Club, and there could be a lot of people that maybe love the idea of it and want to get to that point but they don't feel ready to take that first step i think a lot of people might fall into their camp what would your advice be to people that do want to to kind of reach out to people that want to speak to people about these issues but they don't feel confident enough at this stage to to kind of do it in a slightly more public forum i would say you use some of the resources that were through that um you know the videos that are there talk to the guys that about the fact that they don't have to be public in anything. They can go along there and use a pseudonym if they want. I was sat in a group a couple of weeks ago with 12 guys called Paul. You know, you can use a pseudonym. You can, you know, not say a word. You can literally take it at your own pace. Um, offer to go along and support them, say that you'll walk through the doors with them, because that could be the thing that really does become the catalyst behind them walking through the door. Um, you know, literally just try anything and everything to get that guy through the door, because once he has done, in my experience, Again, some people have it differently, but my experience was that I never looked back. Um, so, uh, yeah, just just keep being incessant as well. Don't be afraid to have that conversation. If you, excuse me, if you're worried about the reaction that you'll get, then it just means that you know what you're having to deal with. If you ask the question directly of, are you feeling suicidal? In my experience, again, you'll get one of two responses. You'll either get, oh, no, don't be daft. I'm absolutely, you know, I'm not quite that bad. Or you'll just get a serious, simple, yes, I am. In which case, you know which you know end of the uh, the stick you're having to deal with there, and that can be uh, again absolutely enormous. So don't be afraid to use that word, have that conversation. All the videos that you've seen today and more are available through our YouTube channels and things like that. Wave these testimonials under the people's noses, and, and as I say, reassure them they don't have to speak; they can take it at their own pace and, and just do what they need to do. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great um, great piece of advice is, is to not be afraid of using the word suicide. And that initial bridge is kind of uh, uh, where a lot a lot of people struggle. I think I think one of the one of the other things that was really really powerful about that was kind of the impact not just on the men involved, but uh, when, you know when, when you looked at, at families and there were kind of uh, mums and sisters and aunts that, that were coming along to, to Andy's man club sessions. And from from personal experience. So my, my family's been uh, impacted by suicide and the way that we dealt with this was a few years back and the way that we decided to deal with that was to just pretend that that had never happened. So uh, so I never discussed that with my parents um, at all. And, and, you know, if that was come up, then it would be like that hadn't happened. Um, it's something that I've discussed with my sister, but nothing beyond that. If people wanted to kind of be able to support their family in maybe a similar situation uh, and, you know, maybe they don't feel like parents or someone similar would would necessarily want to take that step how would you how would you suggest um going about and supporting those around you in, in that kind of situation just by speaking out in your support of organizations such as andy's man club again i can speak through personal experience of when i first started to get involved with the organization the amount of people that then approached me on the quiet and just sort of started to say to me similar to like yourself just on there matthew you know for the first time they shared something and you know obviously i'm i'm devastated to hear that you've been impacted and, and thank you so much for sharing it though because i'm sure that that will 
um, help others in, that have been in a similar situation. But the amount of people that did approach me and just came to me and sort of said, you know, five minutes, you know, just because I put out there that I was involved with something like Andy's Mankle. You know, if people know that you are willing to have those sort of conversations, they are willing to, to come and have them with you. Um, and it, that could be the catalyst behind, again, going from being in a situation whereby you um, are not talking to anybody to having an outlet. And it might just be one-to-one -one initially, but then that can actually make you think, actually, do you know what? Saying what I said didn't appear as hard as I thought it was going to do. So maybe I can go and do it in a room full of other guys and get some you know, additional support through doing that. In my experience, there is somebody in there, there is a similar situation happening in every single room around the country that somebody or other has had a similar experience of. So no matter what you're going through, there will be other guys that have got something, you know, linked to what you're going through. So go and give it a try because they will be able to signpost you and, and help you with, you know, maybe more bespoke sort of organizations to help your specific problem, or maybe just offer support that you actually you hadn't considered before because they've been there and done that. So Brilliant. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Um, okay. I, I think if, if, if there's no other questions, then, then we'll kind of wrap up there, but I think, um, but yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with the point that you're making at the end there. It's that the, the, the hardest part is that initial kind of uh, breaking of the silence, isn't it? And then you do realize once you get into these conversations, the relatability that everyone has and the relief that comes with it. Um, so I think either, you know, if people want to do it either through Andy's man club, uh, either through kind of speaking to a colleague or if they're, if, other people on this call want to reach out to myself and then, then absolutely that's something that we'd encourage um in which case uh so tom has just shared a, a link uh in the chat as well um if you could be kind enough to, to kind of feedback on this session and yeah um, i don't know if you have any any words to wrap up but i just want to say thank you so much it was really really powerful um and, and really worthwhile in terms of everything you've shared there so thank you just thank you for the opportunity you know as many of you will have been aware this weekend just passed was international men's day so you know just a, a link to our page through, you know, this weekend was International Men's Day, look out for the men in your life. Just just reach out to people and tell people that we exist because the impact of it can't ever be underestimated. And a huge, huge thank you to Kaplan for the opportunity to speak to you guys today. If there's anything else that we can help with further, obviously there may have been people here that are absolutely gasping to ask a question but didn't feel comfortable doing so in, in a room so heavily populated, feel free to get in touch with us. Obviously the email address and what have you is out there. There's a contact form for our website. There's all manner of different ways that you can try and get in touch with us so please feel free to do so and we'll help you out in any way that we can do so oh brilliant well thanks so much andy yeah really really worthwhile and i'm sure it's made it made a big difference to the people on this call everyone who's attended also i really appreciate you sharing your time and, and tom as well for your support here so thanks so much um the recording will then be circulated to everyone who, who wants to see it as well and anyone who wasn't able to make it um but thanks again for your time and see you soon <laughs>